25th, 2024 still. A lot going on. Um, I went out and went out to eat with my one client. Went in Olive Garden. People came in and sat down and said, my God, we've all been getting phone calls. None of this is funny. It was some serial rapist doing this tour. Uh, you knew that. You knew that. They said that over a year ago. They hired a serial rapist to do this to me. Okay? And we've all been getting phone calls. There's no excuse for this. No, there's not. Stuff like that. They're rambling behind me. Okay? I take my client and we go into Mark's across the street. Some guy's on the phone and he said, we all know uh, that agent didn't have enough authority to ask her to stay quiet. None of this is funny. Okay? No, he didn't. Uh, I talked to a criminal attorney at the prosecutor's office in Stark County and other police departments. Uh, due to the freedom of speech, only a, grant, uh, a judge can put a gag order on you in a sequestered or grand jury. Uh, FBI are only hire police officers. Um, they cannot ask you to stay quiet. They can't, t and neither can the police. Uh, you can tell however you want. We live in the United States of America, and we have a freedom of speech. It takes a judge and a sequestered or grand juror. And like the prosecutor's office in Stark County, um, any judge trying to sign a court order taking your freedom of speech away out of the grand or sequestered jury, they would be writing their own arrest warrant breaking constitutional rights nobody would sign it like that guy said we all know he didn't have the authority to even ask her to stay quiet well on top of it on top of it he uh, admits he uh admits he uh, already talked to everyone and he knew about uh he talked to the vegas he talked to the church people he knew about that Pete framing me and some guy impersonating a doctor from Altman Hospital laughing at me. It had already been seen at all, uh, Apostolic Church of Barberton telling on me, uh, even witnessed by the police. And Dave already told Danny he met with him. And he confessed he knew all this on a recorder line. Uh, like they said, he was only bullying you so he could get away with stealing. Okay? He was only bullying you. Even a criminal attorney he doesn't have that kind of authority to ask you to quiet. It can't be in a court order. He's been lying to everybody while he's stealing from people. Okay? All right. I go over to Target. It's actually nice. We're walking around. Nobody's saying anything for a while. A couple of people mumbled. Nobody else said a word to her. Okay? Some ladies, like, uh, we even found a tape of her ex-husband admitting... <clears throat> Uh, they had made stuff, dirty stuff up on her before. And how not funny it was. We found a tape of him admitting it. Why well, taped him admitting it too? It's in the case of the police have it. Okay? Even Terry admitted they made up dirty stories on me. My phone staff, the police heard him. Okay? They made up dirty stories on a lot of people. They don't like you, they lie on you. It's a godless occult. They're like Satan worshippers. Okay. All right. I go to leave and the strippers show up. Like they said, they don't doubt that the strippers are doing this in the drug cartel. We can see them around her. Two strippers show up. <clears throat> you can tell by the way they're dressed. Michelle was in charge of all this. And uh, Will left her in charge. And, uh, She's going to take care of this. She ain't going to do jack shit. There's people looking for her. She ain't going to do jack shit. And the FBI even thought it was funny. Her husband cheating on her with a stripper. Look at it. He's 60 years old with an 18-year-old. Uh, my one friend, Sheriff David, called Dave a child molester. I don't care if it's legal or not. When you go 40 years younger, you're a child molester. He said, there comes a point in time you go as young as your grandchildren. It's wrong. Okay? And who, who would make fun of that? There's nothing to make fun of it. But these people sell themselves. They sell other people. And they're trying to extort money because they're a bunch of crackheads and prostitutes. Okay? 
I go get my client out in the car. <clears throat> a man got out of his car and said, I heard them say stuff to her inside. My phone's tapped. Now this is funny. Okay. All right. I'll tell you, I know I've said it before. Um, <clears throat> I don't know if I put it in a tape. <clears throat> But I sat around my apartment for the police here. They already know the dirty stories they made up on me. All right. In 2010 or 11, um, I was going down to Blaylock. It's been going there for a while. Vegas showed up. And then all of a sudden, where Keith had positive services, they turned really dark and a lot of people went and ended up leaving. Well, gossip started going around about me where everything was fine. And I'm sitting in church, and uh, I think it was Leah and somebody else sitting behind me. And they're talking about, uh, she was drunk and drugs, run around the front yard in a bikini. And I'm like, what? And then they're saying, she watches porn laying around playing with herself. I looked, turned around, I went, my God, who are you talking about? Or, oh my God, who are you talking about? We're in church, sitting down the front rows. Who are you talking about? They said, oh, I'm sorry, it's you. I'm like, my God, that never happened. <clears throat> okay. I told Terry about it. Terry started laughing and said, well, if it wasn't for that darn bikini, we wouldn't have this problem, Karen. I'm like, I don't own a bikini. I weighed 230 pounds at that time because I was watching grandbabies. And I was working midnights at um, Walmart stocking. Okay. Watch Danny's kids in the afternoon. There's days I barely slept. I used to laugh on it. I barely got time to bathe. Okay. Well, Dave, after the Vegas showed up, started beating on me. I come home from work and he beat on me. I worked midnight stocking shelves and running in cashier. Uh, he, he, one time I walked in the room, he jumped up. We actually talk about it on a video. How he chased me out, swinging at my head, punched the car door, and he laughed and didn't have anybody in there. I never seen anybody. Okay. And there was other times where he crawled across me, grabbed my arm and twisted it until he it felt like the bones were breaking. And I couldn't hardly move my arm right for a very long time. And all I did is say hello. And then where he sexually assaulted me and screaming that I learned to keep my filthy mouth shut. I hadn't talked to anybody and he sexually assaulted me really bad. Uh, he was acting crazy. I asked Danny, is he cheating on me? He said, no mom, he's just crazy and he's mean. Okay. Right. Well... When Dave found out that what they were saying about watching porn and playing with yourself, he's like, whoa, they need to realize our house is a G-rated house. We have little ones running around, and it's a G-rated house. It's not even funny they said that. And I told him, I said, we own an antenna. We only get like five, seven stations, maybe 20 stations. It's all local. And we have a DVD player, and Stuart Little too plays all the time because it sings, and the grandbabies were toddlers, and they'd stop crying and fussing and watch the cartoons. It's like I don't even own cable, and that's disgusting. Watch porn lay around playing with yourself, you weirdos. They were making up shit like that on me. My Heather, uh, my Heather, my niece Heather. When I was going to that church, my nephew, Nate, he, she's married to him. She's a beautiful 20-year-old. And 20-year-olds do not have filters on their face. They say whatever they think. Okay? She went to one of their parties, and some guy came down and was verbally abusing his wife. Said, told him, get your big uh, fat butt up here, and we're leaving. And she's like, don't take that. That's abuse. She's like, you just want my husband. And you whore and all this stuff. She looked at him. She went... Ew, he's like 40. She called him a whore, called her a whore, had everybody tell ever call her a whore every time she's seen her in church, walk by, call her names. Until she quit, and then they made, she's a stay-at-home mom, and her Nate have 
several kids. And they told everybody she was cheating on Nate even when she was pregnant. And she loves them to death. They just lie. I had went over to that church in 2011 to visit. And they're all walking around staring at me. I'm like, what? Okay. They had communion. Heather was there. She's like, I will not take communion with these people. They will learn it's wrong to lie on people. And that it's wrong to tell lies. Okay. There was this lady uh, Heather brought. She quit going because she thought it was wrong that they were mistreating people back in 2010 and 11. Okay. Uh, she was going to come down to Blaylock. And I told, asked Dave about her, and Dave's like, oh, she's a severe drunk, she's crazy, she's this, she's that. She showed up, she's the sweetest, kindest person on earth, they're just lying on her. Mary Bass, she had got remarried to Jimmy Dingus, and Jimmy went and work, and he was watching porn all the time, got mad, moved home with his mom, so she went to divorce him. They started threatening her at the home, the office, calling that they were getting her going to get her. They were terrorizing her so bad she was afraid to leave her apartment. Okay. She showed up at Blaylock's crying her eyes out. These people are crazy. They're threatening da 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 and how scared she was. Well, she eventually started dating one of the guys down there and they backed off and left her alone. Okay. Well, they started being mean to her there too. Well, she got herself a dream job or a good job. Let's say it, a good job with good insurance. Well, she met some guy online, and, or some guy that's a, a truck driver, a semi-driver, and now she's remarried, happy, has a home, and successful. They couldn't have that with me. She moved on and had better. Where Strange told her she's better to just stay married to him, even if you don't live with her. Because she's lucky at her age to have a missus behind her name. Well, she has a missus, a house, and a faithful husband that loves her to death now. she got more. See what I mean? It's in a call. If, like they said out in North Canton, the church and them are selling uh, videos of what they did to her to prove how big and bad they are. Our parents told us this is why you don't go to churches like that. They're cults. And if they weren't in a cult, they would have never opened their mouth or had anybody touch her. They're a severe cult. Now, I want you to think of that. I told my son, Danny, what they were making up on me in 2011. He's like, Mom, we're, I told you I was coming home from work, and Dave was beating on me real bad. He missed it in one of the videos, how bad he was beating on me for no reason. And um, he said, you know, because Danny knew he was beating on me. He's like, Mom, I would have told them they ruined your marriage. What did they expect you to do? I'm like, Danny, it's not true. He said, I don't care. I teach him for lying. I went, we were going up to Pamers, and I told my ex-sister-in-law, Barb, what was going on. She said, Karen, I would have looked at him and said, what were you doing looking? I said, Barb, it's not true. She said, I teach these people not to lie. And I confront him, what were you doing looking? These people are such an evil call. They not only, I told you, they told people that when I was going to Blaylocks, I got caught out with other men. I'm like, what men? There's no men. I work midnights at Walmart, take care of Danny's kids, I barely sleep and bathe. What are you talking about? There is no men. And they were talking about something, and I went, I was out with my son and my grandsons. I said, and they know Danny and they know Joshy and the da 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 da. They started laughing. Oh my God, they busted out laughing. They said, well, you were actually were out with other men, but they're your babies and grandbabies and they don't count. Is that what's going on? They're telling you you're out with other men and you're out with your children in stores and they're lying. See, they were lying. All this crazy crap. So David would, they would make up an excuse that David could go out with other people. That he could openly cheat. Nobody cared. That's why they were making that shit up. That's where they were making all that shit up. So they, they could open my marriage. And break the commandments, the laws of God. But and justify it in their own mind. Because they're in a call. They don't go by the Bible. They worship themselves. They're Satan worshippers. 
long hair in a bun and a long skirt. And they live like saint worshippers. I told you. Uh, right before the case started. Uh, we were up there. And Delano Eddy came up to uh, Dave. And went, you think you're better than her? Dating all those women. I'm so mad. We're in the big church vestibule. I'm so mad. My face, I can feel it turn red. I walk over to get a drink. I come back and walked off. I went, what? what is he talking about, Dave? He's like, Karen, he doesn't know what he's talking about. Well, these people are making up crazy crap on me. Okay. We go in and then I sit down. I'm still mad. Well, they're saying, you know, Mary, her daughter, her, or not her, Mary, her niece, Michelle, wants to date Dave. And said she's willing to kill somebody to date him. And just the chance of getting to date him. And Dave said that uh, he um, never had anybody willing to kill somebody. And it was exciting just to date him. Okay. I asked him about it. He said he didn't know. People today at the family said that's probably the poor family. They said they were all helping out to get everything and they didn't get anything either. But Michelle's one where Delano Eddie accused him of dating all kinds of women. He was dating her. He was dating a stripper. He wasn't staying at work. He had all kinds of paid off time. See, if you talk to him, even during the case, the police taped him where he had 17 girlfriends in high school, manipulated them all until they all found out and all broke up with him. He's good at manipulating people. Okay. Delano, Eddie had asked him one time, how did you get away with it? He said, time. Everything's about time. But yeah, they were making up dirty stories in 2011 and 12 that were horrible. Dave and I talk about the dirty stories they made up on me. People would laugh at my face. And they would mock me. And they were all lies. And even Terry laughed in front of where I would go talk to her and the police could hear her through my phone. Of that darn bikini, Karen, if you didn't have that darn... I'm like, I didn't own a bikini. I was 230 pounds. I used to watch grandbabies all the time. I worked at night. And I got heavy. And... Nobody wants to see that in a bikini. And I didn't own a bikini. And if I was running around the front yard, I was chasing a toddler. And there was never no bikini. And I didn't have porn in my house. And I don't lay around and be a murder myself. They made up that whole crazy shit back in 2011. Dave and I talk about them making up dirty stories. Just like they made up on Heather. That she was cheating on Nate. Like Heather said. these, And that she's supposed to be going out with all these men whoring around. Even pregnant at home with the kids. See what I mean? They just lie on you. That's why I call them the Pinocchio group. The liar, liar, pants on fire call. They just lie. But they have evolved into such a severe cult. A severe cult. They have hired the drug cartel to stalk people. Like they said, they hired a serial rapist. Some guy to go in and drug me up and tell me to say stuff. Stalk me in my own home. And beat and right me and drug me up and tell me to say stuff. And then photoshopped. I heard feminine wipes above the toilet and stocking tapes uh, and washing and other things. And a sex extortion act. Where does people think that a Jim Jones a cult? Most people would pick at their church until they shut them down. Where do they think that a Jim Jones a cult hiring people to drug beat and rape people is funny? See, that's where even Pastor Mike today. He was talking about adultery was a sin in the Old Testament and still is now. Murder was a sin in the Old Testament and still is now. Bearing false witness against people, that means lying on them, was a sin then and it is now. Coveting and, and wanting other people's stuff was a sin then and it is now. Stealing people's stuff was a sin then and it is a sin now. Murdering people was a sin then and is a sin now. And it also says to love your neighbor as yourself. Where do we think, as Christians, do we think any of those kind of sins are funny? 
I want to know as a society, in a U.S. country, where we know we live in freedom, where do they think any of this is funny? Hmm? Where do they think any of this is funny? It's not. You know, it's just like that agent stealing my money. He opened a real account. Even the sheriffs were talking the other day. We all know that she's an informant. We take turns watching her. He opened that case. Okay. He also stole my money. He acknowledged he talked to everyone. And he knew about Pete stalking me and framing me and finding out it's Alex. The white haired guy with his hair parted on his side. And he's uh, in a beard. And Michelle's a stripper. And they were running a sextortion scheme. And one of their other drug friends dressed up as a doctor for Altman Hospital selling people's information. It's the stupidest sextortion scheme in the world. It's so it's illegal. It's ridiculous. Photoshopping and washing and roofie confessions, trying to lie. They had sodium pentothal reports drugging me up. It's the most stupid sextortion scheme in the world. They could have came up with something better. Um, and it's a stripper and her brother. Hmm? Uh, that agent admitted he knew about them. He had to talk to the Vegas, the church people. And Dave hired Pete slash Alex on his own. And Dave already, and he was already seen meeting with Dave at Apostolic Church of Robertson by three to 500 people. And telling on me that I called the FBI before I talked to him after the hotline. Um, and just like the criminal attorney, the police out of this area, the prosecutor's office, that agent did not have the authority to even ask you to stay quiet. He was only bullying you so they get away with this. They cannot withhold your money and they cannot take you out of immunity. They have, you can, you know, stay an informant until they put you in another witness protection program. You get that money for working the case. Even a criminal attorney said it, prosecutor's office and other police departments. And they would like to know what was wrong with our local police that they didn't arrest that agent the first day for the way he spoke to me and then st embezzling my money. He can, there's not a court order that I can't say anything. Freedom of speech, and it can only be a sequestered or grand jury. And that's the only thing a judge can sign that they takes away your freedom of speech. That agent is only a higher police officer, and he does not have the authority to even ask you to stay quiet. And no judge would sign a, a gag order on somebody outside a grand jury or a sequestered jury, or they would go to jail. They can only put your money in immunity. I found out they can put housing, living expenses, and a medical card. And like my friend from the prosecutor's office, she'll stay in an informant for life where he said you'll have a life of peace as an informant. Uh, for even when you tell the money and immunity until they put you in another witness protection program. And they have to pay you for working the case for trying to get them information. I got a lot of information. Um, and that agent just stole my money and embezzled. That's where other police officers want to know why our local cops didn't arrest him for embezzling. Badgery obstruction, tampering with witnesses. He can't do any of this. And he opened a real case and stole my money. They think it's that a lot of the local police, well, even either the Summit County Police or the Akron Police up in there, I think it's actually FBI agent John that they made fun of. That stole it. And that he stole it on the first day. That's where they've all been talking about that one guy from the case stealing all the, or all the every dime since the first day. He opened the case to steal. That's why he bullied me. Um, and he's been stealing. He doesn't have the authority to ask you to be quiet. It's not in a court order. Like my friend from the prosecutor's office, no sitting judge would sign his own arrest warrant on breaking uh, constitutional laws. Domestic terrorism is a group of people fought furthering their own beliefs, their own ideology, with mostly uh, political or religious backing, okay, with threats or harm to human life against the U.S. constitutional laws. The 14th Amendment, you cannot seize somebody's money or assets without due process of the law. You have to be found guilty and then sued for it. They cannot withhold protection. 14th Amendment. Fourth Amendment, nobody's allowed in your home but police and agencies in a protected custody case with statements. Mm -hmm. You have to have a court order. For even a search warrant, they have to have a court order. It's a right to privacy. Your home can't be violated. Freedom of speech is there. First Amendment. Right to remain quiet fifth. Right to attorney six. Right to a fair court trial bail and bond seven. They slaughtered our Constitution. It's domestic terrorism. This is a hate crime. 
one of the religious men didn't want me anymore. So they had me almost murdered. And when that didn't work, they had the drug cartel, the apostolic godless churches hired uh, the drug cartel to drug beat and rape me, Photoshop me in a sex extortion act. And that agent, like the retired CIA agent said, there's no excuse he didn't arrest them the first day and then take care of you and make sure you and your family were okay. And they should have been arrested for violating you. Hmm? And there's no excuse that he didn't arrest them the first day for what they did to you. They can't do any of it. A CIA agent even said that. She said FBI agents so let people get away with crimes and then go after the big drug dealers. And while they let local ones get away with crimes. And that's not fair. It's not fair at all. And he, she, they do owe me my money. I actually have really good things to do with it from helping my family to even helping some of the victims that lost family members to these murders. These people are part of the human traffickers, the serial killers. 